about the law of sines. Have you ever tried to find a missing angle or side when you only have some of the information? That's why we have the law of sines. The law of sines is a really helpful tool for finding a missing side or angle if you're not given all of the information. We'll show you how to apply it. So, here we have a triangle. Triangle ABC. A, B, C. Side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. Let's say side A is 14. Angle A is 25 degrees. And angle B is 75 degrees. How do we find side B? I don't know. Law of sine says that side A over side A equals sine B over side B, which equals sine C over side C. And since we're trying to find B, we do sine of B, which is sine of 75, over B. Now you cross multiply, so you have sine of 25 times B equals 14 times the sine of 75. You plug it into the calculator and you get 13.522.96157. Now you divide both by sine 25 so b equals 31.9 which you can round to 32 in triangle abc a is 100 degrees side a is 10 and side b is 8 so use the law of sines sine a over a equals sine B over B. You plug in the numbers here. Sine 100 over 10 equals sine B over 8. Now you cross multiply. 8 times the sine of 100 equals 7.878462024. You divide by 10. You divide by 10. And you just move the decimal one. Now you multiply by the inverse sign. And you get 51.9846886, which rounds to 52.
now you subtract 180, you subtract 52 from 180, and you get 128. But, since angle A is already 100, 128 is too big, so you know that can't be it. So 52 is the only answer. Angle C is 42 degrees. What angle is it? So we solve this problem using the law of sines. So sine B over B. Equals sine C over C. So you plug in these numbers and you get the sine of B over 132 equals the sine of 42 over 92. Now you cross multiply and you get 92 times the sine of B. Equals 132 times the sine of 42. times 132 is 88.32524204. Then we divide both sides by 92. And we're left with sine B equals Now you have to subtract 73.75 from 180. ABC, where angle B is 63 degrees, uh, side B is 8, and side A is 11. So, to solve this, we're going to use the law of sines. So, we're going to do side B over B equals side A over A. Sine of 63 over 8 equals sine of A over 11. So you multiply 11 times the sine of 63 and you divide by 8. But when you plug into the calculator, you get an error, which means that this problem has no solution.
Excuse me, how do you solve a quadratic equation? I'm so confused. Well, Lauren, we're glad you asked. We'll show you how to solve a quadratic equation. So there are many different types of quadratic equations that you can solve, but they're all using basically the same principles. We'll start with an equation in standard form. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. To solve this equation, you're first going to identify your a, your b, and your c. Then you're going to take your a, b, and c, and you're going to plug them into the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All quadratic equations can be solved using this simple formula. So first let's start out solving a quadratic equation in standard form. Let's say you have a problem that says 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Now identify your a, b, and c. a equals 2, b equals 3, and c equals negative 2. Now who remembers the quadratic formula? I don't know. Well, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now let's plug in this problem. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus plus or minus 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2 all over Then you get x equals negative 3 plus or minus 9 plus 16, the square root of 9 plus 16, over 4. Nine plus sixteen is twenty-five, and the square root of twenty-five is five. So you get negative three plus or minus five over four. So you split it into two problems: negative three plus five over four, or negative 3 minus 5 over 4. So now you get two answers. x can equal 1 half, or x can equal negative 2. So now I'll teach you how to solve a problem in a slightly different form. Say we have x squared plus 3x equals 2. Now, you might not be able to see your a, b, and c, but if you move everything over and you subtract 2, you'll get x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And that's the standard form. Now you can identify your a, b, and c. So your a is 1, your b is 3, and your c is negative 2. Now you're ready to plug your numbers into the quadratic formula. So as we remember, our quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. So if you plug the numbers in, it will look like x equals 
negative, uh, x equals negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2, all over 2 times 1. Now we're going to solve. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times negative 2. Um, and since 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, but there's already a minus sign, so it becomes plus 8. Yes. 2 and times 1 is 2, so it's all over 2. And 9 plus 8, you know, is 17. So this can be simplified. So we'll leave this as our answer as x equals negative 3 plus square root of 17 over 2 or x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2. show you the quadratic equation in a more complicated way. So here we have another form of a potential quadratic equation. z times ex squared plus a squared plus b equals c. Then we have two parentheses, 2x squared minus 3 close parentheses, squared, plus 1, equals 51. So, first we do the Adelaide's inverse, which means you subtract 1 from each side. So we'll get 2x, sorry, 2 parentheses, 2x squared, minus 3 squared, equals 50. Then we're going to do the multiplicative inverse, which means we divide each side by 2. So we'll get 2x squared minus 3 squared equals 25. Then we're going to do the exponential inverse, which means we square everything. So we'll get 2x squared minus 3 equals 5. And then we just repeat. So then we do the additive inverse once again. So we add 3 to both sides. So we get 2x squared equals 8. Then we do the multiplicative inverse again. We divide by 2. So we get x squared equals 4. And then finally we do the exponential inverse and we get x equals plus or minus 2. And don't forget to leave out your plus or minus because negative 2 squared and positive 2 squared will both equal 4. Now do you understand this? Thank you so much. I totally understand. I solve a quadratic equation. I do as well. <laughs> and that's solving quadratic equations. We hope you enjoyed and learned a lot.